Okay, this lesson is more about exponential models. So if you take this function, y equals 9 times 3 to the x, so thinking about this, if you had, if you plugged in 0 for x, y would be 9. And it's going to be exponential growth. So if you plugged in 0 for x, y is 9. And it's tripling, so it's, it's going up quite rapidly because the, ex the exponential growth factor is 3. So now what you're doing with this function is you're taking this function over here and you're going to go left 1. So you're going to go left 1. So the translation is left 1. And what an asymptote is, is it's, it's something that you, it's a line that a function gets very close to, but it never crosses. So if my rough sketch is going to look like, instead of having a y-intercept of 9, this one, if it's moved over to the left one, it's actually, if you plug in, let's plug in 0, plug in 0 for x, the y-intercept is going to be 27. So the asymptote, so it's going to cross way up here at 27. So the asymptote is the line that it gets, that this exponential function gets close to. It gets close to the line y equals 0. Asymptotes are always equations. They can either be vertical lines, horizontal lines, or lines that are oblique or diagonal. So for the second one, what's going on with this function is it's moving down for in the y direction. So you're taking this function right here and you're just moving it down for. So what's going to let's see what happens with the y intercept. So if we plug in 0 for x, it's going to be 9 times 1 take away 4. So the y intercept because it's moving down 4 the y-intercept is going to be 5. And then what's going to happen is, since it moved 5 down, I know my graph's not hot, but if I move down 5, or down 4, of where my y-intercept was, that means my asymptote line is going to move down 4. Before my asymptote was y equals 0, so now my new asymptote is going to be y equals negative 4. And then what's happening in this graph is that I'm going right 3 and then down 1. So my asymptote is going to be y equals negative 1. So I'm going to move my function over right 3 and then down 1. Oops. You can also be way better at my graph by making a table. But I want to make sure I get through all of this here. So half-life. So we did a little bit of this in Algebra 1. So the half-life is your initial amount that you have, one half. Now it's one half because that's the growth factor and the number of half-lives. A half-life of a radioactive substance is the time it takes for half of the material to decay. A hospital prepares 100 milligrams supplies of te technetium 99M, which has a half-life of 6 hours. So if you had write an exponential function to model to find the amount of that left after 75 hours. So you start out with 100 milligrams. So the number of hours of lap. So if you so to fill in this table, if you have number of six hours intervals right here, the number of hours that elapsed would be zero. So you'd still have a hundred milligrams. And then after six hours, which is one half life, you would have half of a hundred, which is fifty. After twelve hours, which is two six-hour intervals, you're going to have 25.
after 16 hours, you're going to have 12.5. And it's going to keep halving every 6 hours. So write an equation to model the situation. So it's going to be y equals a, which is your initial amount. So my initial amount is going to be 100 times a half. And then I have to figure out number of half-lives. So to figure out my half-lives, I took the number of hours and divided it by 6. So 6 divided by 6 was 1. 12 divided by 6 was 2. Um, this should be 18. Oops. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So my half-lives is the number of hours divided by 6. So even if you're given like 1 hour or 3 hours or 1.725 hours, you're still going to divide it by 6 to get the number of half-lives. So how much technetium, technetium, excuse me, 99m remains after 75 hours? You're going to want to use y equals 100 times 1 half to the 75 over 6. So when you calculate that, be careful. So this is 75 divided by 6 is going to give you the number of half-lives. So that's 12.5 half-lives. That was an exact number. No rounding. So it's going to half 12.5 times in 75 hours. So now I'll just do order of operations, 0.5 to the 12.5. So make sure you do this part first, and then multiply by 100. And I'm going to have to round because the decimal is a long decimal. So it's approximately equal to 0 0.017 milligrams. Also with exponential models you can get what's called the number e. e is a lowercase e, it's an irrational number. So if you have this function 1 plus 1 over x divided by x, if you put these, you can put these in your calculator, we're going to do that in class, and you can see what happens, what number does it get close to. So you can see that this number, E, if you punch it in your calculator, it is close to 2.7. So this is approximate, it's an irrational number. So we use E when we called what's called compounding continuously. So this number is derived from if you start out with $100 and you're going to earn 5% interest, how much will you have after one year? This is the function that you would use. If you had $100 and it compounded twice a year, how much would you have? If it compounded three times a year, how much would you have? So if you compound continuously, we don't have a number for that for that denominator. So we do get close to a number and it's called E. You can graph y equals e to the x on your graphing calculator. So definitely e to the x is an example of exponential growth. It's exponential growth because e is greater than 1. So we know it's we know it's exponential growth. You can also um do e to the e cubed e to the fourth e to anything on your calculator and see what it in round and see what it is. So but the biggest thing that we use for e is compound interest. So to calculate compound interest when it's continuously compounded, not compounded every year, every month, every hour, continuously, is this formula, A equals PERT. So the P stands for the principal, or the initial amount. The R stands for the interest, and the T stands for time. And the A is the amount that you have in the amount that is going to end up in the account. So here's an example. Suppose you have $100 at an annual interest rate of 
compounded continuously. So whenever you read that it's compounded continuously, you automatically need to use A equals per. How much will you have in your account after three years? So you do A equals P, which is 100, times E to the interest rate, which is... So when you do this interest rate, you want to make sure that you convert this to a decimal. Right now it's in percent form. I know it's a decimal percent, but it needs to be in decimal form. So it's 0 .048 times 3, because 3 is the number of years. So be careful with this on your calculator that this is going to be your exponent, 0 .048 times 3. So I would just put it all at once in my calculator and then round it to nearest two decimal places because it's money. So 0.49 when you put it in your calculator. So just make sure that when you read compound continuously, you know you're using the PERT formula and this needs to be written as a decimal. So we, again, we have the next one compound continuously. So I'm going to do A equals P-E-R-T. Suppose you invest 1050, so you're taking 1050 times E to the 0 0.055 times time 5. So put in your calculator 100 times E, and then the E automatically puts an exponent in your calculator. And then I'm going to put 0 0.055 times 5. Close the parentheses. So this is about $1,382.36.